Today I'm going to show you how to build one of my favorite agents on the AutoGPT platform. This here is what they call an answer engine. And if you're not familiar with the concept, essentially it's like a search engine, but instead of getting a list of websites as the result, you just get your answer directly provided to, to you in a clear report with citations. And so what this agent does is takes in a user's question and then conducts research on the web on their behalf and then decides on whether or not it wants to continue doing research or whether it has enough information to provide the final answer. So all you do is type in your question and press run. Now, you know, if you've used uh, Perplexity, then this is something akin to Perplexity Pro. It's quite a good visual demonstration of that. So first our agent is running and it's, it's deciding what it's going to do. So here it's deciding to essentially search the internet for this phrase. And it's done that now. It's searched the web. It's got a ton of results here. This AI block here is um, processing those results into some research. And um, yeah, essentially that data is just processed here in that later part. And that goes back to this uh, agent again, where it this time has decided that the existing research provides enough information. Um, and so it has decided to yield its final answer. And so now we have, if we click on our outputs, the final answer of the agent, this is why the sky is blue. And so now I'll show you how to build this thing. Now this is a you know medium difficulty agent I would say. It's relatively simple and you can you can add a lot more features to it as you go. I think this will inspire quite a lot of you. So the first thing we want to do as with any agent is to add an agent input. And essentially this is a user input. So we're adding the input here and this is going to be in this case the user's question. So that's step one. Now we want to add that key AI block that we saw right at the start. Now I'm going to use um, Claude Sonnet 3.5 to run this. So I'd, I'd recommend using this large language model. It's currently the state of the art, in my opinion. And so now we need a prompt. And you know, you can write your own prompt here. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hop over to Anthropic's dashboard. And here you can generate a prompt. I've seen some people on the platform build agents to do this exact task. And in the future, I would check on the marketplace to see whether there's an agent that you can just use directly on the platform rather than pay and set up the Anthropic dashboard if you don't already use that. But so to use a variable in Anthropic, you need to put double a double set of curly brackets like this. On our platform, currently, you just put a single set. Um, so we're going to say something like research. And then we're going to question. And the reason why I'm using a set of these around everything is that when this variable here and this variable here is filled with the actual value, like the question, the AI isn't going to know what this is because there is no decoration around it anymore. This isn't going to say question. It's going to say why is the sky blue? Um, and if none of those side, you know, this and this aren't, aren't here, then suddenly there's no context on what that text means. So it's a really good prompting technique to put XML tags around a piece of information that you're providing to the large language model when, when that information is dynamically provided. And then we're just going to say something like, your task is to conduct research to answer the following question. Your previous research, if any, is shown above. You can take one of two actions. Search the web, and two, provide final answer. And then we'll just say, to use an action, write its corresponding XML tag with the input 
with the actions in Pet Insider. This is much better than JSON structured outputs. It works a lot better in my experience. Um, so yeah, I like to make agents use XML tags. It's really easy to pass out XML tags. I have a really high success rate in it. Your mileage may vary and it's, it's really down to you. That's the beauty of prompting, it's down to how you want to do it. So, um, but the cool thing about these prompt generators is that you can be pretty vague. As long as you're specific on what inputs you're providing and then what outputs are available, then it doesn't really matter what you write in here. Like the, you know, Anthropic or whatever prompt generator you use is going to write a really good prompt for you. Search the web. I'm going to run this, and here you get your prompt, and you can see why this is useful. So here you can give that a read if you like, but essentially it, it's the same thing we wrote before, but um, it's going to follow a lot, a lot better now. So what I'm going to do is just simply copy that, and then jump back to here, and drop in my prompt. And so these are our variables, so these are our input variables in the prompt. And so what we want to do is just copy the, the text that's inside the, the curly brackets, this part, and then go to here, prompt values, add a prompt value, and then in the key, put that value. And so we're going to do that once more with the question. And there you go. So we've got our two variables there. Well, we know the question is going to come from here, so we can connect that straight away. Now I'm going to run this and we can just see what it does. You can see what the agent has chosen to do here is search the web and here's the query that it's going to put out. And all we care about is its actual answer to the question, which is in this case that. So uh, what we're going to do is add an extract text information block. If you're familiar with programming, then this is essentially a regex block. You don't need to write any regex yourself because ChatGPT exists. So I always use ChatGPT for regex. We're just going to take the outputs, which in this case is two. Search the web or final answer. So I'll say search the web. And we just say to ChatGPT, write me a regex to extract the text from inside a set of search the web XML tags. And there you go. Um, and so we're going to put that in here. And now we just need to turn on, we just need to set this to group one. And what that does is it finds what's inside of the XML tags rather than the XML tags and what's inside. Because that's what we care about here. So that's that. And now, well, we want to do something with this information. And so there's various ways of searching the web on the OGPT platform. My favorite way of doing it is using Exa. So Exa is an AI powered search engine. It's very, very cool. Um, you can also use Perplexity if you want, uh, because you just need to add one of these blocks in and select Perplexity as the model. And this is an online model, so this searches the web um, as well. So we can use either of these. I think I'll use Perplexity for this demo. Uh, I used Exa in the other one. Um, I'll just show you how, how to do it differently. So yeah, what we're going to do is just attach the query to perplexity and what we're going to get from this is the answer to that question. We could just connect this back to past research here um, and well I'll do that for now and we can see what happens. Uh, we'll cycle back to that and then let's for now just cover the other case here and that is the other type of output so just copied this block and the other action it can take is to yield a final answer. Just paste in final answer, replace the text. Uh, make sure you've got group one turned on, and we do. So we're going to connect oops, the text into here. And now we have the final answer. Uh, and so that's as simple as adding a output block. And this is going to be called answer. Okay, and we'll run this, and to be honest, this will work. We're saying, why is the sky blue? 
relatively simple question. I think it's going to find the answer to that question in the first loop. Where this actually breaks down is when we want to do multiple loops here and we'll see like this final answer isn't it isn't saving every step and adding them together it's just saving the output of the previous step which is a mistake so a um, couple of things here so one because we are linking back into this block we want to provide like an initial input and the way we're going to do that is by adding a value block or store value and so I'll put this here and what we're going to do is just write none because we have no initial, no past research at the start. Okay, and so, now we'll run this again. And so here you can see perplexity is working away. It's got its research here. And the agent has returned its final answer. So you can see that was its first output. Search the web. Second output is final answer. So it's got its final answer and we can see its output here. But if we give it a more complicated question that it probably won't be able to get in one run, what is the complete monetary value of Antarctica in a hypothetical sales situation? So the first thing it's done here is to search the web, economic value of Antarctica's resources and mineral oils. Uh, it's done that, it's got a response, and it's decided to search the web again, right? And you see this is where it breaks down because it's going to search the web, and now this research is going to essentially overwrite the previous past research. And in this case, it can just get stuck in an infinite loop and run forever because it's always trying to get more research, but it's always only got one piece of research. But we'll stop this from running. And we need to just do one thing to make the research last. And what we're going to do is create a list of bits of research. And so I'm going to just connect this together, the output list to the input list, and then I'm actually going to connect the output of this block to itself. And so what this is going to do is whenever this runs, we get a new piece of research. That piece of research is going to be added to this list. The list will build up over time. So you need to make two variables, so query and result. Sure. Essentially what we're doing is inserting those two variables. And then we'll say, we'll wrap that whole thing in a search. And again, you know, these are just decorations, these XML tags, just so that the LLM kind of knows what it's looking at. It's kind of like titles or whatever you want to put around it, quotes. I just find XML tags work well because, I think it's because the majority or all of the internet is written in XML, so uh, large language models have been trained on that data and are familiar with it. So yeah, what we're going to do is connect the result into there instead of there, connect the output of this to there instead, and now we just need to get the query, which is here. So, and then we finally just need to connect the resulting list to here, past research, and then we can delete this connection, the direct one. So, by the way, backspace, delete the connection, or you can just click on the little X. And there we go. So let's see how this goes. Oh, okay, this didn't run because I've missed one thing here. This is outputting a list, right? Uh, and this does not take in a list. We will add soon some more protections so you're not allowed to do that and make that mistake. But currently we are building in public and this is a very early tool. So you just need to be aware of this. So all we're gonna do is just do combine texts. Um, basically this combines multiple texts from a list into text, which is what we, exactly what we want to do here. Don't really care how it's done, and we're just going to pop it into past research. Okay, so we're running again. This should generate its first web search query momentarily, and here we go. The estimated value of Antarctica resources, minerals, oil, research stations. And we're now searching the web. Got our research. 
and we've turned it into just a block of text and we're going again so it's decided to search the web for total estimated value of Antarctica land ice tourism scientific value real estate these are not great search terms um, but we are using an AI search engine in perplexity so it can probably handle this pretty well um, so you can see we've done um, yeah, so that's the final answer we've just seen come up. So based on the past research provided, I can now provide a comprehensive answer about the hypothetical monetary value of Antarctica. And so it's used our final answer tags. Um, and so that's going to be parsed out by this, and we have our final answer. <laughs> in case you're wondering, it's $3.6 trillion, in case you have that lying around and want to become a competitor to Santa Claus in the South. So, there we have it. That is how you build an answer engine in the AutoGPT platform. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'll get this agent or, you know, an improved version of it up on the marketplace soon. So you can, you can download that for yourself. Now, you know, there are plenty of things that you could do to an agent like this to improve it. And I'm not going to do that today, but like an obvious one that I would love to do is to use some sort of fact checker. So this is this is Gina AI's grounding API, um, and essentially you just put in statements in here, and it will return to you the factuality, uh, just basically a number from zero to one, and it's like assessment on whether it's true or not and it provides um, supporting and refuting uh, sources from the internet. It can't tell you whether something is actually true, but it can tell you whether the general consensus on the internet says something is true, which is very useful for preventing hallucinations in large language models. And so, you know, something like this with a fact checker in it would be really powerful because you can just put in a question and you get an answer and you can know that you can trust it. Um, we could also get our agent to output citations at the bottom, like I did in my previous version. And um, if you have any questions about building agents, please jump in to the AutoGPT Discord, where I spend every day, and my team spend every day. There are some really, really smart people in there, and they're always really happy to help. Thanks so much.